Okay, we are on to our second last um, tutorial. So next week is the last week of the semester. Okay, so today we are on tutorial 10. Okay. Can you hear me, right? Hello, it's one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. All right. So this is the first time that you deal, or rather, actually not first time, when you deal with non-parametric test. Okay. So the first point is, what is parametric and what is non-parametric? Can anybody say something? What does parametric mean versus non-parametric? Anyone want to say something? What is parametric, what is non-parametric? in terms of statistics. Someone? Keith? Keith, are you there? Uh, this is Gerard. Uh, Gerard, okay. So what is parametric, what is parametric? Non-parametric is categorical and, or, uh, no, sorry, nominal and ordinal data and then parametric is interval and ratio basically non parametric if i'm not wrong doesn't really have um fixed or re fixed intervals the data doesn't have a fixed interval and then parametric is more like numbers and actually there's a fixed interval between each data okay so you are kind of close to the answer but that's not the actual answer okay the actual answer is parametric, the data is normally distributed. Okay. Non-parametric means that the data is not normally distributed, that's all. When I say not normally distributed, it can be skewed data or it can be anything. Usually, non-parametric will be your ordinal and your nominal data. But it's not always the case. Parametric is usually your ratio and interval. Okay. But even ratio and interval data may not be normally distributed. So the most important thing is we look at whether is it normally distributed or not. Okay. Now, because when data is normally distributed, then it makes sense to calculate your mean and standard deviation. If the data is not normally distributed, okay, it actually makes no sense to calculate both the mean and norm normal distribution, uh, mean and standard deviation. So it doesn't make any sense because it's not normally distributed. So that is the, um, the differentiation. Now, we actually did talk about parametric and non-parametric um, last week. Okay. So for example, your correlation coefficient. Coefficient, co correlation coefficient. The parametric version is your Pearson's correlation. The non-parametric version is your Spearman correlation. Right. So we actually did mention a little bit about this too during our um, both lab and tutorial on <clears throat> um, regression. Okay. So today what we are going to learn is just these two tests, your Wilcoxon rank sums test and your Wilcoxon sign ranks test. Okay. So your let's to change another color. 
Okay, your Wilcoxon always accept this spelling error. Wilcoxon rank some steps. What is the parametric equivalent of it? Keith, are you there now? What is the parametric version of it? That means if it's normally distributed, what kind of test you should use? Mr. Keith Lowe, where on earth are you? Hello. Yes. Yeah, uh, sorry, can you repeat your question again? So Wilcoxon rank some tests. What is the parametric version of it? Is equivalent to what what test in parametric? Okay, choose between two samples t test or pet t test. Uh, pet t test. The other way around. Ah, uh, t test. Of course, it's t test. I've only two samples t test or or pet t test. Okay, so oh, Wilcoxon yes. is actually kind of the non-parametric version. version of your two samples, also known as your independent samples t-test. Okay, so your Wilcoxon Sign okay. rank test is equivalent to the strong writing today. Non parametric version of your head. So known as your samples t test. Okay, so far so good. Now the next thing that is quite important is this. This test sometimes is called by different names. Okay. Occasionally, your Wilcoxon rank sums test. If you go and Google it, it is also known as your Man Whitney U test. Okay, and also known as your Wilcoxon Man Whitney. U test. Okay, they are the same. They are the same item. So, what makes parametric and non-parametric? What makes non-parametric test so difficult? The reason is this: it uses rank. Okay. Non-parametric test uses ranks. Parametric test uses ranks instead of mean. Means your average. Okay. And why? We have a process, we have a process, a procedure to calculate rank, to rank things, but we do not have an equation to rank things. There is no equation to rank things. We have an equation for averages. Okay, and that is what makes non-parametric tests very difficult to use um, without a computer or pen and paper. Okay, but because it's part of a syllabus, we will have to learn how to do it. Okay, so with that, anyone with problems? 
So in your lecture notes, in your lecture slides, there's actually other tests, like for example, your Kruxko Wallace test and your fragment test. Kruxko Wallace test is the non parametric version of one way ANOVA, which is not in your syllabus. We can't pull it out this year. And fragment test is the um, repeated samples ANOVA. Okay. So we also take it out of the syllabus. Okay. So in short, what I'm trying to say is for the last three years, you are, you are doing teaching BDA. This is the simplest we can go already. So can anybody tell me why do we want to teach you about non-parametric tests? Anyone? Tansen, why do you teach you about non-parametric tests? Because uh, our data that we handle might not always be normally distributed all the time. Right. Actually, a lot of biological data is not normally distributed. So if you take biological data, for example, next year when you do your major project, and if you take your data and you just go for a parametric test, that means t-test or ANOVA, then my first question if I'm your evaluator is why can you show me that your data is not is normally distributed to begin with? Okay. So there are tests for normality, which is also not being taught to you. All right, that's why non-parametric test is actually very important. Most of biological data is not normally distributed. Okay, having, to, having said that, I actually dislike non-parametric tests because it's so tough to use. At least it's tough to um, calculate by hand. Okay. So let's get started on this. Let's go to our question number two. Okay. So question number two says that we want to investigate whether adults above 60 years old report um, whether adults above 60 years old verbally present report verbal presentation of materials more accurately from the left ear than the right ear. So a test was carried out and we find that the data is positively skewed. Okay, so what test you should use? What test you should use? You think about it, if the data is normally distributed, what test you should use first? Then you go to a non-parametric version. Okay, Lawrence? For the test, I put Wilcoxon sign rank test. All right. Wilcoxon sign rank test. Okay. Because if this is normally distributed, you use a PET T test, left minus right. Okay. So the non parametric version is Wilcoxon's um, sign rank test. Good. Okay. B, the now hypothesis is that um, the adults do not do not report more accurately. So it will be D equals to zero. Okay. And the alternate hypothesis is that left, right ear is better than left ear. So it's a one tailed test. Okay. And you define it as the difference is equals to left minus the right, right ear result. Okay. So now we can actually do our hypothesis testing. Okay. So, question, but see. So this is how we do it. We, we draw the whole table. So we have participants. Okay, left, right, okay, so we have participant one, two, and up to nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, so here 
is 25, 35, 19, 26, 41, 30, 29, 30, and 15. Okay. Here is 31, 35, 21, 20, 40, 30, 37, 18, and 16. So what you do is the same as what you do at PET-T test, you find the difference. So we say that it's left minus right. Okay, so we say it's minus 6, 0, minus 2, 6, 1, 0, minus 8, 12, and minus 1. Then we ignore the signs first. So we actually do the rank. Okay. When left minus right or the difference is zero, we ignore it. Okay. So now if we look at it, which one is the first one? Okay. So Minus 1 and 1 is the first rank, but then there's ties. So it's 1 plus 2 divided by 2. So here is 1.5, 1.5. Okay. So 2 here is 3. Then after that, we have go to 6. So 3, 4, rank number 4, rank number 5. So it's 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, 4.5. Okay, and this is 6 and 7. After which, you put back the signs. So this is the sign rank. You put back, if there's negative, you put back negative. So it's minus 4.5. This is ignore. So this is minus 3. This is 4.5, 1.5. Ignore minus six seven minus one point five. Okay. Then since it is since the outer hypothesis is less than zero, so you actually calculate the W statistic as W plus. So you only have the positive ones. So positive ones, you only have 4.5 plus, so this 4.5 plus 1.5 plus 7. Statistic is 13. Okay, so that is a statistic. And part D gives you the critical value. So if the critical value equals to 3. What is your conclusion? Okay. Avina, what is your conclusion? Do you reject or accept the null hypothesis? Fail to reject. Fail to reject, correct. So D is you. Hmm. Okay, so you say that since um, your W is lesser is more than the critical value, you fail to reject. Check your null hypothesis and then so on. You then write all the explanation. Okay. So E, E asks you if this is a parametric, what is the parametric equivalent if the test is um, or if the data is not is normally distributed, what's the parametric equivalent? Just now I will give you the answer. So faith, what is the parametric equivalent? A dependent t-test. Correct, dependent t-test. Okay, so of you are able to do it. Safe. Okay. So then look at question number three, three A. What test you should use? What test you should use? 
Let's have who is this person? Ishana. What test you should use? Ishana, are you there? Eh? What did you just blabber? What did you just say? Uh, the World Cup should rank some test. Huh? What? Can somebody translate? She said Will Coxon rank some test. Yes, correct. Oh, oh, do you actually translate that? Okay, it's correct. It's Will Coxon rank some test. Okay, so the hypothesis is just like your, your pet T test hypothesis. Okay. Now, hypothesis is um, no difference between the drug. So, the A equals to B, and your alternate hypothesis is there is drug A is more effective. So, drug A is more effective than drug B. So, it's a last field test. Okay. All right. So how do you do it? Okay. Now question part C, you have to calculate the statistic. Okay. So you calculate the statistic. Now what you need to do is to combine it, rank it, and separate it out. Okay. So this is a bit troublesome. You combine, rank, and you separate it out. Okay. So you end up with this kind of table, okay. The pain for A and the rank, okay. After which you have another table, which is the pain scale for B and the equivalent rank for B. So B three, four, six, six. Three, two, and four. Okay, here will be four, five, five, seven, four, three, two, three, and five. Okay, so basically you take A and B, put them together, you rank them, then you split it out into two, into A and B again. So here the rank will be 4.5. Um, yeah, here will be 4.5 because here it's also 4.5. Okay, and here and you just write down 8.5, 14 14.5, 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 14 12, 16, 8.5, 4.5, 1.5, 4.5, and 12. Okay, anyone confused with how is it being ranked? Anyone confused about it? Okay. All good, ah? Okay. Yes. Okay. Then after that, you calculate the ranks itself. So the sum of the, the rank sum. The rank sum for A is 56.5. The rank sum for B is 63. Okay. So you use the TA as the statistic. Since, since NA is the um, scale A is smaller than sample size B, so you use TA as the statistic. That means you take this value as the statistic. 
Okay. Now, so if you look at it, you have here one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here n equals to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So here is n equals to nine. Okay. Then you look at the table because it is a one tail test. You look at the lower probability. So here the critical value. Okay, you look at equals to 43. Okay. And then since the statistic is the statistic is less than the critical value, okay, you basically fail to reject the now hypothesis. Okay. You reject now hypothesis. You accept the now hypothesis. Therefore, drop A and is as effective as drop B in relieving pain. All right. So far, all of you got this answer or not? Okay. Now, D is slightly different. So we go to question C part D. Okay. Question three part D. Okay, in a similar study, there were two drugs administered to groups of 22 patients, 11 each. Okay, and then it was you were scaled. So what you have is um Let's draw the table. Okay. You have your patient ID. Okay. So this is patient um, 1013. Okay. So this is a pin scale of um, drug A. So this is 3. Okay, 1104 is 4. 1011 is 2. 1309 is 2. 1409 is 3. 1210 is 3. 1310 is 4. 1111 is 6. 1142 is 6. 1096 is 3. 1222 is 2. Okay. So this is one set. Okay, let's look at the data from here. Okay. So I will not write down the ID, otherwise it's too much to write. So the patient ID here. Okay, you count whatever number you fill in, but I want pain for drug number B. So I have four, five, five, seven, four, three, 
two, three, four, seven, five. Same thing, I group A and B together, rank it, and I split them apart. Okay. So this is my rank for A and the rank for B. So rank for A, I end up with 7.5, 13, 2.5, 2 2.5, 7.5, 7.5, 13, 19.5, 19.5, 7.5, and 22.5. Here will be 13, 17, 17, 21.5, 13, 7.5, 2.5, 13, 21.5, 7, okay, miss out one number, 1, 2, 12.5, 13, 7.5, 2 uh, so this one, 7.5, 2 .5, 13, 7.5, 2 .5, 13, 7.5, 2 .5, and 17. Okay. So I will have my sum sum of the ranks. So sum of the ranks here is 102.5. Sum of the ranks here is 150.5. Now because, so since both the sample size A and B is actually more than 10, I can actually use normal um, approximation. Okay. So how do I do normal approximation? The mean is then given by this formula, N A multiplied by, sample. so sample size of A equals to sample size of A multiplied plus sample size of B plus 1 divided by 2. So you end up here is 11, 11 plus 11 plus 1 over 2. So the mean is 126.5. Standard deviation is approximated by this equation and sample size of A multiplied by sample size of B multiply by this. Okay. N is divided by 12. Don't ask me why is it? Just that as that it is the equation. So you end up with 15.23. Okay. Then you can calculate the Z statistic. The Z statistic is T minus of the mean divided by here. So which one you should use? 102.5 or 150.5? Which one you should use? Okay, which one you should use? Any idea? So because you are looking at the null hypothesis, remember your null hypothesis, right? Is that drug A equals to drug B. But this is a one tail test. The alternate hypothesis is A less than B. Therefore, you actually use the A statistic. And here you have 102.5, actually it's the same. 126.5 divided by 15.23. This you get um, minus 1.58. And then you calculate it to the probability. So P 
that is lesser than 1.58 is equal to 0 0.0571. This you look at from the table. So this is a p-value. The conclusion is since the p-value is more than the critical value for the alpha, you fail to reject your null hypothesis. So you accept a null hypothesis. Um, so the conclusion is drug A is as effective as drug B. All right. So that is your answer. Wait, do, uh, oh. so can I ask, right, the, mm -hmm. how you get 102.5? Because uh? I don't know why my sum rank is 38. <laughs> 28? 38, 38. Oh, how can you be 38? Wait, but how do you calculate 102.5? At, at this number, lo? at this whole huh? at this whole series of number? Huh? Okay. How, wait, wait, wait. how do you have to get 38? 19.5 plus 19.5 is almost 40 already. Like. Oh my god. Eight. Right? Uh, wait, what did I do? Okay, okay. okay thank you. Know. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. 19.5 and 19.5 is 39 already. How do you get 20, some, 20 something? Okay. So please, uh -huh. when you do all this calculation, have some feel of what is wrong. Okay. Uh, and, sir, sorry, I'm uh, still confused about the ranking. How, how you assign the values. How you assign the values. Okay. Let's. Uh, still quite lost. Okay, let's look at, um, let's go back to question C part one in itself. So we'll, we'll settle that part first, okay? So how do we do that? Let me clear. Okay. So how to, okay, so the, there are two ranking methods. The two ranking methods are different. The ranking methods for sign rank test and rank sums test are different. Which one do you get it? Which one do you, which one are you, which one you want? Rank sum. Rank sum. Okay. How to rank in the rank sum test. Okay, so this is your question, right? Okay, so let's look at um take your question three part A as example first, huh? So what you have is this. Let me see where do I uh, where do I grab off easily? Four. Okay. So now what you have is um let's say how do I draw it properly? Okay. Let's say this is your data. Okay. So let me have a different color. Um, drug A. So drug A, I have three, four, six, six, three, two, and four. Then I use another color. Say this is drug B. So drug B, I have four, five, five, seven, four, three, two, three, and five. Okay, somebody help me check whether it's all my um, numbers correct or not. Three, four, six, six, three, two, four, correct. Four, five, five, seven, four, three, two, okay. So when I actually put them together, 
So I combine them. Okay. So combine them, it becomes a just a skill. Okay. And I combine them in order. Okay, what do I mean by in order? My in order will mean that I will sort that out. So this is the pain scale. Okay. So let me just do one at a time. So I go for A first. So A, drop A, I have two. Okay. Um, should I, okay, let me just re, re, we do this so that it makes it a, a little bit e easier to see. Okay. So, okay, now this is the drop. Okay, this is the pain scale. Okay, so I go for two. So, drop number A, two. So, this is set up. I look for, is there any other two? So I have drug number B, which is also two. Okay, so this is set up. How about three? Drug number A, I have a three. So this is set up. Drug number A, I have another three. So this is set up as well. Okay, drug number B, I have two trees as well, three and three. So this is three and three. Okay. Then after that, four. I go for drop A again. Drop A, I have one, four, two, four. So A, A, I have four and four. B, I have one, two. Oops. Four and four. So B, also have four and four. So that settles. Okay, five. Five, in drop A, I don't have five. So in drop B, I have one, five, two, five, three, five. Drop B, I have five. B, I have five. B, I have five. Okay, how about drop number six? Drop number six, I go, I found drop number in scale six here. So A, a will be six and six. Then I left with last one is this B seven. Okay, so let me count. I'm supposed to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is n equals to nine. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, n equals to seven. So seven plus nine, I'm supposed to have sixteen. Okay, let me just count them. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 and number 16 so all 16 correct then i start to rank them okay so originally this is rank one and rank two correct so rank one and rank two because it's tight rank so this becomes um so this is i call it i uh, temporary rank okay then I have, this is my rank. Temporary rank, rank one and rank two. So this is 1.5, 1.5. Okay, so this is rank three, rank four, rank five, rank six. Okay, three plus four plus five plus six is what? What is three plus four plus five plus six? 18. 18, okay. So 18, huh? So because 3 plus 4 plus 6, 18. 18 divided by 4 is what? 
4.5. Correct. So this is 4.5 each. 4.5, 4.5, 4.5. Okay. This is rank 7, 8, 9, and 10. So 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Uh, okay. So thirty-four divided by four. Eight point five. Okay. So eight point five. Eight point five. Actually, should I? Okay. Let me just use different colors. Ah. Uh. So let me just erase all this. Let me just use different colors. Maybe a little bit better. So this is rank number 1.5. So this is rank number 1.5 as well. Okay. So my red, red, this is 18. So this is 4.5, 4.5. And then this is 4.5, 4.5. So this is 8.5, right? 8.5. So here's 8.5. 8.5 and then this is 8.5 8.5 okay then next this is rank 11 12 13 11 12 plus uh, 11 plus 12 plus 13 equals to 36 13. so this is 36 so 36 divided by 3, I get 12. Okay, so this, I get 12, 12, 12. Okay, then here, oops, 14, 15, and here is 16. So 14 plus 15 is what? 39. 14 plus 15 is what? 20, 29. 29. Okay. 29 divided by 2? 14.5. Okay, it's 14.5. 14.5. Okay. Then 16, there's only one, so it's just 16. Okay. After that, you do a split up. Okay, you split up into rank for drug A and rank for drug B. Okay. So rank for drug A, we just collect all the red ranks. 1.5, settled. 4.5, settled. 4.5, settled. 8.5, settled. 8.5, Set up 14.5, set up 14.5, set up. Okay, then drug B is the blue ones. So we select the blue ones 1.5, set up here 4.5, set up, set up 4.5. So now I have 8.5, 8.5, 3 12, 12, 12, 12, and last one 16. Okay. Then after that, oops, after which you just do the sum of the rank. So it's the rank sum. And here the rank sum, you just add up all the numbers for the red, you get 56.5. You add up all the blue numbers, you get 63. And Mr. Gerald, Gerard, this is how you rank. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. All right, then let's go to question one. Okay. I will not write out question one. For all the hypotheses tests re regarding ordinal data, it is to we have to assume that the underlying population follows normal distribution, true or false. 
Mm -hmm. Let's try this. Ooh. You cash? True or false? 1A. Uh, is it false? All right, it's false. Okay, we cannot assume. Okay, 1B. The alternate hypothesis for Wilcoxon rank sum test is that two variables are not correlated. True or false? And? Miss N, Margaret Go, where are you? Oh, hi, Jess, sorry. Hi. Uh, okay, 1B. Yes. Or oh, false, false, I think. Right. Yeah, it's false. Because we have not, we have not mentioned anything about correlation here, okay? 1C, to perform the Wilcoxon rank sums test, we have to rank each group separately rather than together. So, Gerard, True or false? We have to rank them separately rather than together. Gerard. False. Rank false. Together. Right. Yeah, just now I will show you. Huh? Okay, rank uh, question 1D. If, if the sample size is large, we can approximate Wilcoxon rank sums test using a Z distribution, a normal distribution. Is that true or false? Who is this Mr. Person? Hello, where are you? Hey, who are you? Hey. Hey. Ah, Shame. D. Shame. Oh, is it true? True, correct. Yes. Okay, E. We can only conduct two tail hypothesis tests for Wilcoxon side rank test. Okay, only two tail tests, huh? Is it true or false? Is this person? Eva? Eva? Oh. What? False. False, correct. Okay, you can conduct a uh, one-tail test as well. For Wilcoxon signed rank test, when ranking the magnitude of difference, we will ignore the rank with differences equals to zero. True or false? Okay. I would say that this is a quite a trick question. Grace? Grace? True or false? E. Uh, F, one F. True. True, okay. Now, um, this is actually very subjective. Um, some people will ignore differences equals zero. Some people will not. But it uh, seems that most people tend to ignore zero, okay? Um, as far as this module is concerned with ignore zero. I understand that in my in my recorded lecture, I never ignore zero. Okay. So 1G, if the test statistic of Wilcoxon rank sums test is greater than the critical value, we will reject the null hypothesis. True or false? Jen? Jen? Uh, I put false. False, correct. Okay. So it, it's the same when it's um, okay. This is the only time that when the test statistic is greater than critical value, you actually accept the null hypothesis. So this is a bit confusing here. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? The part F. So what's the answer? False or true? For ah uh, true. For here we will we we'll use true. Okay. Okay. Now, I, the reason is I tried to look for different textbooks and a lot of textbooks actually kind of evade this question when it, there are differences of equals to zero. And when I go all the way back to Wilcoxon's actual paper, it was never meant for equals to zero as well. So there is always a difference. And because of that, it's very subjective. But as far as we are concerned here, 
you know, if there is a, a difference of equals to zero, we ignore it. Okay. All right. Okay, then no, if no other questions, then that's all for today. And what I'm going to say next. Uh, next Tuesday, we have our final lab session, which is quite fun. And then our final topic with Thai Square Test, which is very easy to do. So please come for next lab session. It's quite important. Okay, so if not, then we stop the recording and that's all for today. Bye-bye.